As a chef and a nutritionist, I often get asked, why do you think our nation is so sick? My answer, what do we do every day? We eat food. I live with illness and have used food to help me get well and feel better. My goal here is to teach you to do the same. Eating healthfully can be simple, delicious, and nutritious. So chew on this. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sachs, culinary nutritionist, and welcome to Chew On This. Today we have a very exciting episode. We've got a bunch of kids here with us. And today's topic is growing a healthy child, getting kids in the kitchen. And with me is my dear friend and colleague and fellow chef and nutritionist, Julie Negrin, kid chef extraordinaire. I like to call you that. Thank you. And we've got a bunch of kids. We've got Nina, Zachary, Hunter, that's my little one, and Gianna and Jack, it's my big one. And we are going to cook sesame soba noodles, right? It's going to be awesome. Kids love them. They're noodles, so they're kid-friendly, and the whole family likes it, and they're very nutrient-packed. Super. Mommy. Okay, and what I want to... Mommy, yes, Hunter. I want you. Okay, in a moment. What I want to just talk about is Julie wrote this amazing cookbook called Easy Meals to Cook with Your Kids. Okay, and you can get it um, through her website, julienegrin.com. And what I love about this cookbook is that it's an ages and stages approach, meaning that each recipe comes with a guide in terms of what your child can do at a particular age. So the sooner you get your kids in the kitchen, they'll start to develop healthy eating habits. And that's what Julie is all about. And as you can see, Jack marked up Julie's cookbook here <laughs> with all the recipes that he has cooked and wants to cook. So I'm going to turn this over to Julie. When you're cooking at home with your kids, you can set it up in a way that it's very safe for all ages. A lot of people get really nervous and they wonder how they're going to be able to cook with kids right. and not having them be too close to the heat or sharp knives. But the great thing is a lot of vegetables can be cut with pretty dull knives. You can use a butter knife, cutlery. I use plastic knives sometimes in cooking classes. And these are great. Um, for the older kid, I bought these at Williams Sonoma, and these are great little knives. They come with these plastic sheaths, and the kids love them. You know, you can just keep them in here. And it's all about teaching them how to be safe with the knives. Cooking with kids does sound like a lot of work, and it can be, but I really recommend having grandma stay over when you're going to do your first project so it's a positive first experience, having your sitter stay an extra hour, because the earlier they start cooking, the healthier they'll, they'll eat, because the more like, they'll be more likely to eat yep. new foods if they actually are prepping the meal. We want to make cooking and eating healthy fun. Exactly. And that's why if you're doing it with kids when they're young and they see it as an art project, it can be fun for the whole family. And you actually can give them tasks, which I'm going to start giving them a task Let's right now. Let's do it. Okay. You can give them a task that actually Here's is kind of hand. annoying for adults, picking leaves off of herbs, but they love to do, and they'll spend 20 minutes doing it, um, sitting at the dinner table away from the heat. So if parents want to set them away, you can put young kids, two and three year olds can pick leaves off. So I'm going to have you pick the leaves off the stems, okay? And then we're going to have um, Jack and Gianna are going to start cutting their carrots. Okay, so into here round, are the carrots small for you guys. rounds. Can you guys cut these into small rounds? The bear claw, right, Gianna and Jack? Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Awesome. So we're doing something called mise en place. Can everybody see mise Great. en place? It's French for putting everything, getting ready everything ready in advance. So we're going to get all our ingredients ready and then we're going to combine them later, right? And there's all kinds of other tasks that we're not going to do today that young kids can do, like break an egg, um, knead dough. They really get excited about being able to use a masher, a whisk, a peeler. Peeler and graters are probably the more dangerous, I yeah, think, than the knives a lot of times. Right, right. So you want to watch their little fingers, but there's a lot of ways you can incorporate the kids into even the smallest task. And then they get more excited about eating dinner, which we all know a lot of parents struggle now with picky eating, with kids who don't, won't come to the table, they're on their DS. This is actually a good family time, too. If both parents work, it can sound stressful at first, but once you have a routine with the kids and they have their special cutting board and right. they have their special space at the dinner table, you can actually start giving them tasks and have a kid, Jack's only six, almost seven, and you can watch how well he's cutting he could make an entire salad, right? Superimpose an art room on top of the kitchen. Because here, you know, you have paints in different bowls in an art room. Here we just have different ingredients. And, and it's nourishing the kids. It's bringing kids nutrients. And it's getting them touching healthy foods and exposed to healthy foods. And even 
honestly, even if your kids just go food shopping with you, that is so important. Have them put groceries away. And, and try not to take on the attitude that, you know what, it'll just get done faster if I do it myself. So should we have Zach um, and the, Nina and Hunter start working on the dressing? I think that would be a great idea. Great. Do you have anything you want to share with the audience? Well, about your experience in being exposed to all of this healthy food? Well, when I was two, I ate really good, and I used a knife when I was two. So, but see the knife, see the knife that Hunty was using before? Uh, I was using that one when I was two. Right. And then you advanced, right, right? As you've yeah. gotten... And then I used that knife, then I used this knife. Do you have anything to say about healthy eating? Uh -huh. What? We, we don't eat this. Um, we don't eat candy. You don't eat candy? <laughs> no? It's you don't eat, healthy. like... It's not healthy, you're right. You don't eat desserts, like, every night. Well, you know, you love ice cream, so you kind of get ice cream every night. But That's again, okay, it's one. real food. You know, not That's it's good. not that it's... it's it, It's a sometimes food. It's so nice. But when your kids eat healthfully, generally speaking... You shouldn't need to worry if they have a sweet here and there. And that's, Jewel, that's something we were talking about last night. We tend to go to extremes in this country. So, I mean, parents that don't let their kids have any sugar. And one wrote me and said she goes to birthday parties and she has a little bit. And, of course, she goes bonkers. Um, so I really Careful recommend kind of a balanced approach. Because if they're eating Good. healthfully the majority of the time, the body can tolerate a little bit of sugar, honey, and maybe here. syrup. syrup. That, um, and Zach's doing a great job here. We'll kind of move over to this task over here. He is measuring out. Like Zach's 11, so he can do a lot, almost any task in the kitchen. Once the kids get to about 11 or 12, they can work with the heat yeah. after you've assessed that they're safe, that they're being smart with the heat, and they know to keep the pan handle topped, and they're recognizing that things yeah. are hot. Um, some nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds can do it. So what have we put in so far? We put in some mirin, which is a rice sweet... A rice-based sweetener, which is an awesome thing for dressing and marinades. Um, we have rice vinegar, and um, this is a, also a great vinegar to keep on hand. Vinegars are great for dressings and marinades. Good. You can keep them forever. Yeah, put them right and what else good did we put in here? What smells really good here, guys? Clean. Sesame oil is a great kid-friendly uh, ingredient because a lot of kids love the flavor, so you add it to a dish, and it makes it much more palatable. To okay. the kids. You can put that right and we added a little bit of natural maple syrup. We don't have any. Versus the other brands that are actually, <laughs> if you look at the bottle of a lot of the maple syrups out there, the first ingredient is corn syrup. There's actually no maple syrup in maple syrup unless you're buying 100% natural maple syrup. Healthy food costs so much, it's so expensive to eat healthfully. And, and my answer is you want to pay on the front end or you want to pay on the back end? Because right now we are all paying on the back end. And, and that's scary. We do not want this generation to pay on the back end. So we want to invest now in these children and pay on the front end with them. I um, think we're good, right, guys? I think we're ready to combine. Do you want to assemble Hunter. the noodles? Sit with Zachy for one more minute, Pumpkin. We're almost done. You're Hunter, okay. do you want some noodles on your, on your board? Come over here. Oh, <laughs> walk around to Zach and walk around the other way, sweetheart. No? OK, come on under the table. So when they're done, they're done, and that's okay. That's okay. Come here. The other thing that we really want to focus on is um, talking about food in a way that makes food enjoyable. Using vocabulary instead of like, ew, or uh, gross, which is a lot of times what we hear from kids. Instead, we need to encourage them to say, it's too spicy. I don't like the texture. Right. It's, I like smooth instead of crunchy. Right. So that we're really getting to think about food, not just from a nutrient base, which is what America, we tend to focus a lot on, like exactly. calories and you know, carbohydrates. Instead, let's talk about how delicious it is. We are so focused on calories and fat and sugar and salt and nutrients, we're not looking at the colors and the textures and the flavors of our food. And that's what we want to get the kids into. They love colors. They go to all of that unhealthy food because of the colors. Look at this. Look at these colors. So I think we can assemble this and everybody can try it. What do you say? You want to eat yeah. something? We're squeezing a little yeah. water juice in there. You've had it? I'm getting hungry. Are you? <laughs> you are too? Does anyone have anything else to add? Cool.
All right, they're putting a little bit of lime juice in, so whisk that up. Squeeze that lime juice in. Go. You can go run over there. I think the other the other issue I want to bring up too is how important it is to eat um, as a family. And that's why cooking as a family ends up converting into eating as a family. And I know it's, good job, Hunter. I'm so glad you came back. So a lot of families I know, kids tend to eat early in this country, 5.30. You want to get them in the bath by 6.30. I just encourage a lot of parents will say, well, my spouse isn't home you know, by the time the kids are eating. I say, still make a salad or have a soup and sit with your kids at the table. Absolutely. Don't put them in a smaller kid's table. Don't have the TV on. Even if it's a 15-minute meal together, model good eating habits. Put a napkin on your lap. Talk about your day. Talk about the food you're eating. And we can all taste so when it. I'm excited do to it, taste Don't this. do it all in one place. You, no, no, I'm going to have you I do think it. Jack has something to share with us about some dressings, right? Do it in a right? circle. Yeah. Do, it, do it in a circle. Well, yeah. When Zach, I was little, oh, I made a fish dress, um, dressing recipe myself. So I took mustard, olive oil, and um, vinegar. And then I shook it up. We put them in a container usually. Yeah. That's a great thing Good. for kids to do is to put dressings in a container and you let them shake. Yeah, for like and then a minute or two. Okay. And then. Will you put the cilantro in? And Come then over it'll here, put turn the all brown. In. Put your cilantro and in. Then Just I the dip my finger in and, and I put taste the it. And it's perfect. It was perfect? Yeah, it's perfect. Let's not, let's because not put this in. I've been cooking for a long time. Just yeah. put that pile in. And you can go to my website at okay. stephaniesacks.com and you can get a Good. lot of the tips on my website, the things that we've been talking about today. Because we've said a lot, given you a lot of information. You can get Julie's fabulous Good. recipe, a link to her website. Good. You can follow me on Facebook. Okay, Julie as well on Twitter. Well, I want to thank all of you guys for being awesome cooks. Okay, awesome guests. I'm proud of every one of you. And thank job. you for taking the time to come on the show and to teach everybody out there about the power of cooking with your kids, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Julie. And I want to say, please stay tuned for more Chew on This. We've got some great episodes coming up. Please go viral with it. This is really important messaging, and we're hoping to do a lot more on educating for children, for adults illnesses, tips, pointers, as my son is humming here and singing. <laughs>
from the wall ones or IGA, just taking them out and seeing, but actually seeing where they came from and the farm owner who made these groups planted them by hand and put their hard work into making this food or vegetable happen. Awesome! I love that! <laughs> That's what we want everybody to know. We want to know where our food came from. And Julie's a huge proponent of that too. And we want people to focus on whole foods. Get your kids to understand where their food comes from because it doesn't come from a supermarket. It comes from the ground. Look at these potatoes, how beautiful they are. Mm, yummy. Right? Heirloom tomatoes. Look at that and the heirloom tomatoes. What? Look at these. These are heirloom tomatoes. Mm. Right? Do you normally see tomatoes in all these different colors? No. Look at the little broccoli. Can we have a bite of something? Yeah. Hey, Egan, have you ever seen broccoli that looks like this? No. It doesn't come from the supermarket like this, right? Who has ever seen red leaf lettuce that looks like this? Beautiful. Looks you like grow it just this came here. out of the ground. It's all yep. wilted. Look, at, look how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. It's not wrapped in plastic. Notice none of this is in plastic. And Vicky, yeah. this, this came out of the ground right back there. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. And look how gorgeous this is. Stephanie, what? have you ever seen um, a grapefruit and do this? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It's a pretty cool one though, right? Grapefruits are, grapefruits are really good. Yeah, do they do they grow around here? No, they don't. Yeah, right? Oh, cool. <laughs> they make okay. they make they make they make their own dance. That's pretty awesome. Oh, I want that. Show it to the camera, kid. Show it to the camera, kid. Mikey, <laughs> he's doing this. <laughs> It's like you go and you show them all of these different ingredients and they get to taste. Because if you have a nice farmer, they let you taste when you're at the farm stand. Like this. You have an idea of where your food comes from. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you feel like you maybe know your food a little bit better. Yeah. Right? This apple has like... Where do you think? Do you think the apple grows in the ground? Or do you think it grows maybe on a tree or in a bush? Good you got it. Good. What do you think this grows? What do you think cherries grow on? Good. What about tomatoes? Um, on ground. No. Fine. 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 Very good. Fine. Very good. What about zucchini? Fine. Fine. Oh, they're good. They're very growing stuff. I don't know. He's savvy. We just have to get him eating them. One of our favorite things on the East End is the sweet local corn that we get. It grows everywhere. And Vicky's got an awesome pile right here. And Jack has a piece of corn that he is going to peel open. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. Whoa. Oh, Jack. Wow. Look how beautiful. Should we all take a bite of this yummy corn? Yeah. I know you can't because you have a loose tooth, right? And it's hurting you, right? All right, I'm going to take a bite first. You take a bite. Raw corn is so good in the summer. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Give your brother a taste. No. Come on, Egan. Egan? <laughs> you take a taste now, Zachy. in your area. Check it out. It's an experience. And now I'm going to take you guys to a supermarket. We're going to look at food in a bit of a different perspective. Look at packaged food, fruits and vegetables. But now you have a lesson. You know where your food comes from, right? From being at the farm stand, right? So you'll look at the food in the supermarket a little differently. So why don't we get in the car and head on over. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. How about you? Yeah. Right after I hold the duck, Stephanie. Oh, right after you hold that duck. <laughs> we are at the supermarket, Cirillo's IGA in Amagans in New York. A little different than the farm stand, right guys? Yeah. What do you think is so different? Um, there's, there's, there's like different packaging. It's not outside. 
Alrighty. So it doesn't look like you can see where everything came from. Great point. Great point. And this is the deal. Okay, supermarkets are awesome. Okay, very easy for busy moms like me because we can come under one roof and we've got all the stuff that we need. Right? Yeah. But what you need to know is you need to know how to navigate a grocery store. So we're going to go down a couple aisles and I'm going to show you how to make some healthy choices and Julie's here to help us out. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, let's, let's do go. it. Let's rock and roll. So Jules, here we are in the juice aisle. We've got three eager boys. There's a lot going on in this juice aisle here, and I have some questions for you, and I know that the kids do. Hey, Zach, what do you have for us? I have Powerade, and I want to know if this is good for me or not, because I like drinking these at my sports games, because I am a sporty guy. Okay, what do you think, based on what you're reading on the ingredients list? I don't think it's good for me, because high fructose corn syrup is one of the first three ingredients. That's a really good eye, exactly. We want to avoid things that have fake things from laboratories like high fructose corn syrup. What about yellow dye number five? Probably not so good. So another alternative would be a juice that just comes from fruit juice, cane sugar, and the other trick is to cut it with a little bit of water or add a little bit of sparkling water and make yeah. it into a really fun drink Great. in the summertime. Put a little lemon or lime as a garnish. I mean, obviously not for your sports games. <laughs> yeah, well, and also for sports games, too, what we worry about are the electrolytes. So you lose a lot of fluid when you play sports. So there are these great packets that you can get called emergency, and you can put them into water. It doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Much better alternative. And the, All right? health, and the health food store also has electrolyte juice drinks exactly. that more natural. Alright, exactly. what else we got, boys? Let's see. Um, I just want to know if this is good for us. Well, you know what? It's a really good question because products that have um, cartoon characters and something else, you usually want to be a little skeptical about them. And skeptical means we want to be a little bit unsure that they're good for us. Ask a lot of questions, right? What does that say? Can you see corn syrup on there? Okay, modified corn syrup contains less, 2% less than, it also has red dye number 40, red dye number 5. I'd say this is probably not such a great pick. There's probably some healthier things like healthier dried fruit, like the fruit raisins, leathers. yeah, fruit leathers that come from more natural sources, dried fruit, right. dried cranberries. If you don't have nut allergies in the family, you can use nuts, you right. can do a, a trail Fresh mix. Fresh fruit is also a great option. Mm -hmm. Okay, super, Jack. Thanks. Let's see, Egan. I like these because I like drinking them at school. Are these good for me? Oh my gosh, this is pretty good. First of all, I like that it says organic, and I know this brand is actually pretty reputable. And if there's parents that are unsure about a company, my sister is actually calling and asking me to call the company. Yeah, you have the, to do that. The more information you can get from the company, if they're unwilling to share information, there's there's something to be uh, wary about. Well, that's something I always say, Julie, is that if people are, are remiss to answer questions about products or food that's being made, you don't want it. Exactly. You know, if they're really forthcoming about information, then you can feel confident that they're good to feed you. The food is good to feed your kids. The thing that I actually like about these juices, these pouches, is that they have half the sugar than normal juice boxes, which I think is a great alternative to, you know, give the kid a little juice. Yeah, put it in a lunchbox, a little treat. Because I so. realize people are on the go, they need to give their kids something. Yep. And then I, the, my other recommendation is really making juice a treat. Yep. It doesn't Completely. have to be every meal. A lot of parents don't realize it's really it's sugar water. So yeah. making sure that if you don't cut it, that the kids realize that it's it is a treat. Because what happens is the palate, the taste buds get used to all that extra sweetener yes. from these juices, and then they expect that and crave that. Whereas and if, sugar's addictive. Exactly. Okay, so. great. So now we're going to move on to a different aisle. Thanks, Julie. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So, were these good for me? Yeah, they're a thumbs up. We're going to send these guys off uh, on a little scavenger hunt, right? Yeah. Okay, you guys, I want you to go pick something out of the market that you want to bring back to me and Julie, and we can talk about it, okay? Something you're interested in. And we're going to talk to Zach about cereal. How does that sound? Sounds great. Okay, go on, guys. Go find us something interesting. Okay. So, Jewel, over to you. Cereal. Cereal. I think that the tough thing about cereal is that a lot of cereals make claims on the front of the box that may not be true. So we really want to be skeptical. Again, I'm using that word. We want to be wary about what's on the front and instead use our, you know, abilities to read the ingredients, have the kids, if they're starting to learn how to read, it's a really good way to educate them about food and what's inside the food. Zach, you want to go get me a cereal box and we'll assess whether it's a good idea or not? I'm, I'm going to choose these because I've seen it on 
TV commercials, and I think I like these ones. All right, my brother liked these growing up. Okay, so made with whole grain. Now, I just want to remind people that a lot of things have been done to this since it was an actual whole grain. Right. It's been processed, it's had a lot of ingredients added to it, it's been shipped, it's been put into a box. Right? So look at here. What do we have? What's the very first ingredient? Sugar. Oh, oh my goodness. What about that? Yellow number six. What about that? Blue number one. Oh. What about that? Red number 40. Oh. What do, do you, you think? think that that's helpful? No. So what's a better alternative, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So this is a really nice brand. And it's got, it says no pesticides, no herbicides. The first ingredient, you know what, I can't even find the ingredients list, that's a good thing, that means the ingredients list is really short. What's the first ingredient? Organic brown rice flour. Nice. And cane juice is the sweetener. So this is all um, a little bit healthier. This is for kids who maybe want a little bit something sweeter. Grown-ups looking for something healthy. A lot of grocery stores have Kashi and a lot of brands. I love the Muesli. Muesli from all the way from Europe, really good brand. Nice and dense and heavy. Right, exactly. This will so, fill you up for breakfast. So, and I think the thing that's really important to understand is that, you know, if we want to transition our kids to some healthier choices, what we do is we go with brands that are, you know, whether they're organic not or on TV commercials. Not on TV commercials. Because they spend, spend but, all their money yeah. on having the commercials and advertising and not putting in the better ingredients. You are working. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You are a hundred percent right. So the brands that are not on TV, right, are the better ones. Are the ones that we want to buy, Out except the, the ones that maybe are, are are sponsoring my show, right? Eleven years old. <laughs> Eleven years old, and you know what time it is. I love it. Oh, we've got someone here with an ingredient. Let's see, Jack. Oh, fancy. Oh, okay. We got Reese's shell topping. Okay, what do you think? I'm just curious what you think. You think that's healthy? Well, I think it's sort of fine because it's topping. Okay. But I think Maybe it's a once-in-a-while treat? It's a once-in-a-while treat. Right, yeah, it's, it, it can be a once-in-a-while treat for some people, but for this mommy, this is not really a once-in-a-while treat. You know, because it's got artificial flavors in it. First ingredient is sugar. We go with some different brands that don't have any artificial ingredients in it, but this is a really good choice. Okay? Because look at kids, yeah, kids love this stuff. It's true. And you can find a lot of these versions. I don't better, love it. A lot of better versions at the health food stores. And when I say once in a while treat, I mean once every couple months, not once yeah. a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Egan seems to have gotten lost. Where's Egan? Oh, I've been with him. I'll go find him. Oh, oh here, here I am. Oh, here he is. <laughs> okay, another juice, E.G. E. Simply Limey. Okay, Jules, what do you think? Um, hmm, first ingredients, filtered water. Next ingredient, natural sugar, lime juice. You gotta be wary of natural flavors. There's no um, regulation of the term natural, so that's something to be a little wary about. But I think all in all, I probably, if I did serve this to kids, I would serve it cut with water. Cause that's it's probably what we super do. sweet. And I yeah. probably wouldn't serve it like at every meal. My my husband loves the lemonade, yeah. and so we get that and we cut it with seltzer yeah. or water. Not yeah. that bad, or we make yeah. fresh lemonade. Yeah, it's yummy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you check us out next time.